Welcome to the Chantel Ray way, the inspirational way to lose weight for life through intermittent fasting. Remember, the thoughts and opinions on this podcast do not constitute medical advice. Hey guys, welcome to Waste Away Through Intermittent Fasting, episode number 26, and I'm so excited. We have Barry McKay here, who's on so many different radio stations. Tell us just two that you're on, Barry. All right, well, we'll go with the East Coast here. You can catch me uh, on The Buzz in Rochester, New York, also on Magic in Greenville, South Carolina. He's going to be kind of asking your questions. Chris is taking this week off, so we get Barry this week asking your questions. And if you can, don't forget to write your name and what city you're from. I always like to know um, where you're where you're at in the country. It's exciting. So Definitely. Barry, you want to start us off? Let's. I'm ready to go. In fact, uh, questions one and two are kind of related. The question is from Harriet in Charleston. Harry, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate that. She says, question, I love the thyroid episode last week. My doctor told me my thyroid looks normal, but I'm so tired all the time. And the more I read online, I'm convinced something is wrong with my thyroid. Is there another way I can check this? Good. All right. And then go ahead and answer. Let's ask the second question since it is so similar. Okay. I've been reading about, oh, this is from Jenna in Charlotte. I've been reading about checking my own thyroid online and have read that I should be using a basal thermometer. Don't you use that for Thanksgiving? (laughs) A basal thermometer. I only have a regular thermometer. Is there a difference in the two? So I, first of all, for the for the first question, my suggestion is to get a thermometer and check your own thyroid. Um, so the average temperature of a healthy adult, it's kind of like what we've always heard, right? That 98.6 degrees. Um, and so I suggest you check your temperature in the morning and also check it mid afternoon. And if you find that your temperature is low, that it's in the 97s or 98s, that might be your first clue that you have hypothyroid and it could mean that you have low cortisol as well. And so the best thing to do is to take your morning basal temperature and if it's it should be between 97.8 and 98.2 in the morning. Um, but if you're using a, if you're not using, basically a bas- basal thermometer is you can buy one on Amazon. I like to get the ones that are digital because I never can read those other thermometers. Can you? (laughs) Do you know what I'm talking about? I think certain people, do you know what I'm talking about? Like the regular thermometers that are not digital? I have a really hard time reading them. Right, yes. Do you ever use a regular, do you ever use the ones that are not digital? No, I'm I'm a digital person, so... (laughs) I use the ones where it's it's so easy to read. Yeah, because I feel like it's harder to read on those other ones. But you can get a clinical basal thermometer right now on Amazon. And what the difference is, is that it's accurate to the hundredth degree. So it's highly sensitive. So it's a... They, they usually use it for a fertility monitor. So like, you know, people who want to track, I know you'd want to track your ovulation, right? I, I feel very fertile right now as we're talking. I don't know why. I guess it's all this talk about basal thermometers. Yeah, but that, that's what usually when people are looking at their thermometer, it's to track their ovulation. Um, and it's so funny because I, you know, before I had my son, Kyle, I didn't want to get I didn't want to get pregnant and I actually was using this temperature method and I completely screwed it up. Um, but I ended up getting pregnant, um, using that cycle, but I was reading the the thing all wrong, but, um, and it still that's worked. How- it still worked. <laughs> Yeah, I actually got pregnant with my son doing it, but I screwed it up. It wasn't, the method didn't work. I screwed it up. I was like thinking something wrong. But anyway, so if you, my suggestion is to go on Amazon right now, go get that $25 thermometer, get the digital one because you'll definitely screw it up the the other way and figure out what your temperature is and see if your temperature is low if your temperature's low, that's the very first track to say, hey, is my temperature off? 
And checking it that way is a great thing to do. Fantastic. Now, if you're at a, if you're at work and you're in a business meeting at work, should you stop everything and take your temperature or should you? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, what's funny is like, you know, it's a really cool thing to do is to do it with somebody else who it has like perfect, you know, that's in perfect optimal health, their thyroid's functioning, that sort of thing. You know, I... I've said this before, but I've healed my thyroid 100% through intermittent fasting, but it's also through my diet. And just recently, I just got back from Arizona and my diet was just terrible. You know, when you're on vacation, I wasn't on vacation, I was a work trip, but you know how that is. You can work definitely- trip. Work trip, I tell <laughs> Work trip. <laughs> but yeah, so I ate- terribly. And when my, my suggestion in my book is I talk about eating 80% clean, 20% eating whatever you want because you don't want to deprive yourself. But like when, so right now I'm so tired. When I was on this trip, I was more like probably 40% clean, 60% eat whatever I want. And so now I came back from this trip and I'm exhausted and I can tell my thyroid is not functioning. Anytime I start eating you know, too much dairy, too much gluten, too much whatever, my energy starts going down, my everything goes, I'm exhausted. And so I know my thyroid's not functioning. So now I have to kind of tilt the scale a little bit. And now I'm eating more like 90 to 95% clean. And when I say clean, it's that paleo lifestyle where I'm eating vegetables, meats, and fruits. And I'm really, really limiting what I'm eating as far as any of that junk and processed food. But I still don't, I don't go 100% because I know as soon as I start doing 100%, I start getting, oh my gosh, I'm getting binge mode and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so all right, I do want to get, I, I think I'm going to get in our next episode. Um, I think I'm going to bring maybe I'll bring my stepdad on who's a doctor and he specializes in thyroid and stuff like that. I might bring, I might have a guest speaker for us next week. And I think I'm going to do another talk because we're getting so many questions about thyroid now. It's out of control. I might have next week just talking all about thyroid and answering because we don't have time for me to even answer all the questions I keep getting. Since we talked about thyroid last time, we're getting an overabundance of questions. So I think next week might be just all about thyroid again. All right. We'll have to think of a catchy name for it. Thyroid, yes. Thyroid <laughs> Wednesday or something. Something catchy so people remember. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's all right. move on to our next question. Our next question comes from Tracy R., who we don't know where she lives, so let's just make it up. From <laughs> West Virginia. Uh, she says, hi. See, that's a perfect example of someone not putting where they're from. Tracy, right. Tracy. tell us where you got to tell. Don't forget to tell us where you're from. Because we'll add things in and you may not like it. <laughs> um, Tracy says, is it okay to take my vitamins in the morning with water when I am fasting or is it better to wait until I eat? So yeah, we had a similar question to this last week as it related to painkillers. And it's really a two-part question. First, will the vitamins break your fast? And second, will it cause ill side effects? So first of all, most vitamins will not break your fast, but it just depends on how much of an impact it has on your insulin levels. Like there's certain things like fish oils that definitely should only be eating, be taken during your eating window because they contain a lot of fat. Um, I mean, technically, some of them will not have an effect on your, your insulin levels, but some will. And so it's just better, just take all your vitamins when you open your eating window. So like, don't take it in the morning. Just plan on taking it when you have your first meal. And for me, like if I take too many vitamins on an empty stomach, I start getting nauseous. I mean, it just, your stomach starts getting upset. It's just, you know, some people, and it, you know, certain certain vitamins are better when you, they're better absorbed with food. Some are better without food. So this is this is a really complicated question. And my suggestion is just to be on the safe side, just take all of them when you 
are opening up your window and eating it is my blanket statement. But I'd have to know what vitamin is she specifically talking about. But I would suggest just taking it all when you open your eating window. That sounds good. The eating window, very important. <laughs> you know, I learned something when taking like vitamins. Yeah, like, uh, uh-huh. the you know we we tend to like put them in our mouth and and flip our head back. Uh huh. But it's really better not to do that because when you flip your head back, you're actually closing off your throat more. Mm, so when you take that them, is a good point. So yeah, just take them and just keep a normal head position. Oh yeah, so is. just keep your head upright. Yep. Another bonus tip from Barry. There it is, there it is. <laughs> All right, are we going to question four? Yes, let's move right. on. She says, hello, Chantel. Just came across your podcast, listen to it all day at work. Love it. So I have a question about the whoosh effect. This is going to be good. Yeah. I want to hear about it too. I've been doing intermittent, <laughs> she's been doing intermittent fasting for four weeks. She loves it, but she's so scared to weigh myself, she says. I feel better and I look better and feel a difference in my clothes, but still not want to weigh myself. Anyhow, I was telling my friend I thought I was going through a whoosh effect today because I've been peeing all day and a lot every time I go. She said it probably wasn't the whoosh effect because not everyone gets it and because I don't have much weight to lose. But I've always been stuck at around 145 to 152 pounds for the last three years. Is this true that I would not really experience the whoosh effect if I'm already fit and don't have that much to lose? LOL. Thank you, Mar- Maritza. Maritza from Maritza. Miami. Maritza. And we don't know where she's from because, again, she didn't put down. So, Maritza, from wherever you are, first of all, just congratulations. Yes. Let's give her a round Woo. of applause for um, completing your first month of intermittent fasting. And let me just, for those of you who don't know what the whoosh effect is, um, (laughs) what it is, is as you burn fat, you'll notice that the area where the fat was, you won't, you won't really notice it, but what happens is the area where that fat used to be takes on sort of a squishy consistency and that squishy fat forms because where the fat cells used to be and the fat cells are extracted and And that space where the fat used to be gets filled with water. So like a lot of times people go, oh, well, I'm, I've been eating perfect. I'm eating clean. And why am I, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, doing that. Why am I not losing weight? Because what happens is where that fat cell used to be, it gets filled with water and that squishy fat is filled with water so you're not losing weight on the scale. And so basically what happens is, is it fills with water and then all of a sudden, whoosh, it it gets, the water gets rid of. And so that's why that squishy fat area can last for as much as a few days, as much as a few weeks. And then one day, you know, inexplainably out of nowhere, that squishy fat tightens up and you start to look leaner and it's basically water that you're losing. So that's what we call the whoosh effect where it's like whoosh all of a sudden. <laughs> why is it that I'm losing weight? Because so for example, for me, when I did intermittent fasting, the first two weeks, I lost no weight, none. And then on the third week, I lost six pounds. Well, it is physically impossible for you overnight to, you can lose water weight, right? But you can't lose six pounds of fat like that um, because it's just scientifically impossible. But because of the whoosh effect, it is possible that, that those, that fat, you know, those cells got filled up with water. And so that's why we call it the whoosh effect. So Putting it another way, even though you may be in a state where you're constantly burning fat, the result of that effort may not show up immediately on the scale. And so more likely they show all at once in one day. And so suddenly you have that whoosh of weight loss. And so for Maritza's question, you don't have to be extremely overweight to experience the whoosh effect. I've personally seen all kinds of shapes and sizes enjoy the benefits of the whoosh effect. 
And some of my thinner friends who've tried intermittent fasting, they've noticed the same thing. And so the biggest thing is I just feel like you shouldn't be obsessed with the scale because it really gets, it can make people go up and down and mentally. And I always tell people, weigh yourself on the day that you feel thin. Like if I wake up bloated, I'm not getting anywhere near the scale because I'm like, (laughs) why am I going to get down in the dumps all of a sudden, you know? And it sounds like you've been working really hard, but the whoosh effect, you know, you have to be careful though, because a lot of times I hear people say, well, I'm gaining weight, but, and they're eating everything but the kitchen sink and they're like, well, I'm just waiting for that whoosh effect to take place. (laughs) Doesn't work that way. You know? (laughs) So you have to be really careful with it. And, you know, but like I said, I am a perfect example of, you know, I, I, it did take me two weeks to lose weight on the intermittent fasting, but I literally truly lost six pounds of fat after that. And then I just started going down, 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 down. So I wouldn't get too obsessive over the scale, but I would make sure I think the scale is good. It kind of keeps you in check of where you're at and keeping to the right, you know, weight. But I would not be obsessive over it for sure. And don't worry, your whoosh effect will not happen while you're standing in line at Target. So just so you know, <laughs> and if it does, just be prepared to say something intelligent if you feel it happening. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't, don't scream or, you know, make people afraid. Hey, guys, I'm so excited that my new book, Waste Away, The Chantel Rayway, is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and pretty much anywhere you can find books. But we also have the audio book, the e-book, and my new recipe book that you can download all the recipes that I love that I make, and it's super cheap. It's all my favorites. Anyway, if you have a minute to write a review on Amazon, I would be ever grateful. All right, let's go to question five. Okay. I've been enjoying your podcast and gleaned a lot of great info. I'm sure my question has likely been asked before, but I haven't been able to find an answer. I am 46. I have gained about 45 pounds over the years through many pregnancies, et cetera. I recently started if for about one month. IF. IF, 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 sorry. Yeah. Uh, for about one month now, I have lost 20 pounds so far. Wow, I, yeah, congratulations. Awesome. Whoosh, there it is, <laughs> right here in this letter. I, I usually fast 16 to 20 hours per day. I calculated how many calories I need per day considering my activity level, and it is somewhere around 1,500 a day. Eating two times per day, I am always under calories by about half. I typically eat around 700 to 800 calories. Is being in this kind of deficit going to kill my metabolism? There's tons of conflicting info out there. I can't seem to eat more. I am not typically hungry and have good energy levels, eating a good, clean diet with good proteins, lots of veggies and fruit. Thanks for your help. And this is from Jeannie from Ontario, Canada. Awesome. We're getting out of the country. I love it. I want some maple sugar. I'm sorry. (laughs) I can't. Sorry. Go ahead. So first of all, congratulations on your success so far. That's awesome. I'm so excited for you. 20 pounds is incredible, and I have no doubt that you're going to continue to lose. But to give you a simple answer, you are not killing your metabolism if you've had so much success this month, right? Like there's the perfect example. You're losing weight. You're doing great. Um, But on a more serious note, you know, long-term effects, like you mentioned that you're eating two times a day in a four to eight hour window. And studies show that your metabolism won't start to slow down until you've gone days without food, not hours. And so um, I've looked at some studies in 2004, a group of 29 men and women fasted for 12, 36, and 72 hours for a study in the British Journal of Nutrition. And their metabolism was measured before and after the fast. And the results showed that their resting metabolic rate had not changed at all after the 12-hour fast and actually had increased by the 32-hour fast. And it wasn't until the 72 hours of fasting that they started to notice a decline in their metabolism. And so I feel, um, you know, I feel like I just... Since I've been doing fasting, I know my body so well. Like, Hmm. it's unbelievable how when you fast, you just like 
my body is, I know everything about it. Like I told you before, I know right now my thyroid is off. I don't even need to take my temperature. I don't need to do anything. I know my body so well, my thyroid's not functioning at optimal uh, capacity. Why? Because I'm not eating as clean as I need to. And like I said before, if you don't have any thyroid issues, you should be eating 80% clean, 20% whatever you want. If you are having thyroid issues, you need to be more looking at like about 90, 95% clean. Um, Because like I said, I have been so tired. Like I'm exhausted right now because I'm not eating the, the way that I need to. And so anyway, according to this study and others that I've read about, you are not doing any damage to your metabolism until you're going more into that 72 hours or longer. And so your body's not going into starvation mode. And I will tell you, I do, I personally do a lot of biblical fasting. So I do a lot of um, longer fast, not for losing weight, but just to truly like get closer to God. And I'm getting ready to write my second book right now. It's almost completed. And I think I'm going to title it called When You Fast or Fasting Made Easy or something like that. But I cannot stress to you the benefits that I've found and just how close I've gotten to God from from fasting. So, but, you know, normally I don't go more than a three-day fast, um, but I can tell, I feel like my, my metabolism does start slowing down after I've done a fast for three days or longer. I kind of feel a little bit more sluggish and that sort of thing. So um, I just... In my book and on this podcast, I always go back to some key principles, just eating whole foods that your body is truly craving and only eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full and focusing on eating the things you really enjoy and never overeating on them. And I hear in your your question that you are really focused on calories And I hope that one day you can get off of that because when I interviewed these thousands of women that are, you know, thin, they've been thin their entire life, they don't count calories at all. They focus on hunger, they focus on fullness. And, you know, just I want to say, keep up the great work. Thank you for the great question. But I'd love to see you get to the place where you're not counting calories and you're using your own body, listening to it for hunger and fullness cues. So that's my advice. Fantastic. And now we know what happened. Eve in the Bible was fasting for 72 hours. (laughs) So hungry, she grabbed the (laughs) apple. First thing, she was just so hungry. Uh, Yes, Uh, exactly. Moving on here, um, I love listening to your podcast and have been doing the intermittent fasting lifestyle for about two months and have lost 12 pounds. Woo! Recently, yeah, good yeah, job. That is awesome. Recently, I've heard that hormonally intermittent fasting can have a negative effect on women and that they shouldn't fast more than 16 hours and no more than three days a week. I have heard people say that women should do crescendo fasting. Is that like with the tambourine or something? How do you... <laughs> How do you respond to this? Anita in South Carolina. Anita, thanks a lot for your note, your your question. So yeah, I have heard about this crescendo fasting. And for those who are not familiar with it, basically what they say is you start out fasting two to three non-consecutive days during the week. So maybe you're fasting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a couple weeks, and then you increase to like Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you know, they, with this lifestyle, they recommend doing something like light yoga on their fasting days and a more intense workout on your non-fasting days. So personally, if you know, know someone who's new to intermittent fasting, I recommend that they stick to some sort of window each day, even from the beginning. But, you know, if you feel like, hey, I'm new to intermittent fasting, I want to try this inner, you know, crescendo effect, which is like, Basically, I'm not doing it every day consistently. Um, But I have found people who, they're new, I feel like they do a lot better when they're more consistent and they do do 
a window of just six hours a day or eight hours a day. And most people I know start out an eight hour win- eating window. And once they're used to that, they find themselves reducing their eating window to seven hours, then six hours, then even down to four hours. And, but similar to this cres- crescendo way of fasting, you're working yourself into this lifestyle. But on the contrary, the crescendo fasting, you know, they might do eight hours one day, then they eat regular. I just, I don't love that idea. If you're going to work your way into it, I guess I'm okay with it. But I, I personally now, I don't, I love intermittent fasting so much and I feel like it's healed my body. I don't feel like there's ever a reason that you should be eating more than eight hours in a day. I know that sounds crazy, but you're not giving your body any time to heal. You're not giving your body time to rebuild and repair if it's digesting food all day long. And so as far as intermittent fasting being harmful for women as it's relating to hormones, that's the complete opposite that I've found. I have personally struggled with PCOS, irregular periods, and I feel like now, finally, I will say this, your periods when you do intermittent fasting in the very beginning might be a a little bit irregular, but then now I'm like clockwork and I know you're like, Barry's like, well, good. I'm so glad now that I know (laughs) that Chantel gets her period regularly, right? I just tweeted that Uh, out just so you know. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) see, I didn't think I'd get this kind of information being on the show here. I'm so excited. All right. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. But your thyroid is the queen of all hormones and it affects every single cell in your body. And through intermittent fasting, I've healed my thyroid and doing that 80-20 clean. And so I'm going to, the next podcast I'm going to do, because we got so many questions, it's going to be all about thyroid. I have to really... Just, I'm going to get a doctor on here to really talk about how great intermittent fasting is for your thyroid. So let's move on to the next question. I love it. I'm not sure if I can do this as I have bouts of low blood sugar occasionally. I've done the hunger fullness eating with success, but have only been doing that haphazardly lately. I like the idea of fasting. That's from Naomi from All right. Michigan. We don't... <laughs> Barry's making this up. We don't know where Naomi's from because she didn't put it on there. But, um, well, thank you for your interest in fasting and your honesty. And I love that you're considering your options and you're doing your research. But if you're not going to do the fasting, um, you definitely need to focus on eating when you're truly hungry and stopping before you're full. But um, I always recommend, like I said, starting with an eight-hour window and than fasting for the other the other time of the 24 hours. Um, but you'll be amazed at how quickly your body adjusts, adjusts. As far as the low blood sugar, I used to constantly have, I feel like if you have low blood sugar, intermittent fasting is the best thing you can possibly do. So what happens is when you have low blood sugar issues, when you eat, your blood sugar jacks up, right? And then it crashes and then it increases and then it crashes and then you constantly ride this wave. What happens when you do intermittent fasting is your blood sugar gets more regular, more regular than it ever has been. And, you know, just like I mentioned with the PCOS, the biggest risk factor factor for developing diabetes is obesity So even if all intermittent fasting did was to help you lose weight, it would reduce your risk of diabetes. And intermittent fasting just helps those blood sugar levels because of its effects on insulin production. So um, there's a few studies that I read that I wanna talk to you about. People who fasted for 24 hours once a month were less likely to have been diagnosed with diabetes. And that's a study of 200 people in Utah. Those who fasted also had slightly lower blood glucose values than the other people. I mean, if you Google like studies on, these are scientific studies that have been done that are showing that people who do fasting have slightly lower blood glucose values than other people. 
There was another study done that young men who fasted for 20 hours every other day for two weeks, but they kept their caloric intake the same as before. They showed improved insulin sensitivity, even if they didn't lose any weight. So if if you don't lose, you know, these people who didn't lose weight, but their insulin sensitivity were was a huge uh, difference. So there's just so many different studies that have been shown that men with uh, type 2 diabetes who fasted for 24 hours, they showed a fall in uh, blood glucose and insulin levels. There's just on and on. I cannot tell you how much fasting will help your blood sugar levels. And I used to be up and down and up and down and up and down. And my blood sugar has never, ever been more stable than it is doing intermittent fasting. So That's awesome. you just got to trust the process. And it, it's hard in the beginning. That's the thing. You have to push through. And, and the rewards are for those who just push through that don't give up in the beginning where they're like, oh, this is too hard. And then they just don't keep going and you won't get the results that you're looking for. And you take down the mirrors in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot look anymore. <laughs> All right. That, that is so true. The fasting is, is like the big wake up call to your body. First, first yeah, time it is. You do it. All right. Um, Question eight, which glucose monitor allows you to draw samples from other parts of your body besides fingers? Signed, mm. Don and Joan. Well, I personally use a freestyle monitor and I you can prick your, your fingertips and, and check your blood sugar. Um, but I've read there's... There's another thing that's called a CGM, which is called a continuous blood glucose monitor. And they have them now that you don't have, you can literally see what your blood glucose is. I'm going to post that on my site. They have a new one. I heard that you do still have to get a doctor um, note to get it, which doesn't make any sense. Um, and they're, they've gotten so cheap in value. If you go to things I like, I am going to make sure that I put that um, continuous blood glucose monitor on my site. And you don't have to continue to prick it. You can see it's not perfectly accurate, but it's good as can be. Um, and I've done it and it's so cool to see. So I suggest getting one of those continuous blood glucose monitors. They aren't outrageously expensive and they're super cool. Ooh. If you remind me, I need, I'm going to talk about that next time. Make sure I do that. I have to talk about, I'm going to actually show it to you. I'm going to buy one and I'm going to show it on the next, next episode. Fantastic. Maybe we should even, maybe we should even do a giveaway, <laughs> a blood <laughs> glucose monitor you, giveaway. Are you going to ask your doctor for two or three of them for giveaways? Yes. Is that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the doctor on next, the next podcast, oh. we're going to see if they'll be on it. That'll be awesome. All right. All right. Uh, I think this is our final question today. Yeah. All right. Uh, from Terry. Uh, and she's, well, we have no idea where Terry is from. Terry, I will not make it up. How will I ever lose weight if it takes 18 to 24 hours of fasting before the body burns fat? <laughs> I guess she's saying she doesn't want to fast for 18 to 24 <laughs> hours is basically what she's saying in a non uh, saying it way. But, mm -hmm. you know, in different studies I've read, in general, your that your best time where you have your maximum fat burning time is going to be between 18 to 24 hours. So that's why I do recommend doing an occasional 24-hour power fast, as I call it, which is from either lunch to lunch or dinner to dinner. And that being said, it's absolutely impossible if anyone says that they know when, like that exact moment that you start burning fat because you start burning fat when you burn off all the glycogen stores in your body. And so, you know, after you eat and in that first 12 hours of fasting, your body is really not burning much fat or burning very little because you're living off your last meal and your stored glycogen and your stored sugars. So, you know, when these people are eating from morning until night, it gives your bodies a steady stream of glucose and you're not getting that break 
from the taxing requirement of digestion. And so what happens is most of our population is, pay, is faced with insulin resistance, weight gain and disease because the eating causes insulin to rise and the amount of that rise depends on the type of food you ate before and the insulin sensitivity of the person that's doing the eating. So let me ask you this, Barry, what did you eat and when, what did you, what was the last meal that you ate and what did you eat? The last meal I ate, this is going to be, be honest. Your, I'm going to be I honest. want you're you gonna, to be, be I want to hear chair. the whole thing. You're okay. Fall off your chair. Okay. It's a <laughs> point. It's a point of the house where like you have nothing to eat in the house. Okay. So you're going through and you're putting things together, right? Okay, so, right now. So you're saying you barely have any food in the house. Right, right. Because so I'm going to talk to your wife. I'm going to say, <laughs> Barry called you yeah, out. He's yeah. saying you didn't do the grocery shopping. Well, she is a magician. Let me tell you something. So I had a, a, a muffin and she, okay. put, she uh, fried an egg and we had mm. some ham and some uh, little syrup and, uh, that, and made a sandwich out of that. So that was my husband. My husband says I make the best eggs in town. He's like, nobody makes better eggs than me. But I love I love eating like like an egg and cheese biscuit or something like that for for lunch or dinner Mm -hmm. or whatever. So is that what you had for lunch or when did you eat that, that? That was that was for lunch. That was for lunch. Okay, what time did you eat that? That was about an hour and a half ago. Okay, perfect. I yeah. love it. I'm, I'm telling you, give me an egg and cheese biscuit, and I'm just like the happiest girl in <laughs> that's town. <right. laughs> it's, but again, I've been eating too many egg and cheese biscuits, and that's why my thyroid is not functioning. <laughs> so you can have like, like you could have um, an egg biscuit, like made with like, you, you. I'm gonna put a recipe for my um, cauliflower biscuits. Mm. Um, that are delicious. And if I have a little bit of cheese, that won't kill me. But if I put a tiny bit of cheese on a cauliflower biscuit and eggs, oh my gosh, delicious. (laughs) But anyway, so obviously the higher amount of carbs that you ate, it causes a greater rise in insulin. So your insulin increases and it stays there for several hours after eating. So your insulin right now is probably still high from what you, from what you ate. And Right now, you're still in what we call your fed state, right? Because you just recently ate about an hour and a half ago. Um, When I talk about your fed state and your fasted state, it's too hard to tell when you're in your fed or fasted state. So technically, when you're eating, that's in your fed state. When you stop eating, that's in your fasted state. Even though right now, you wouldn't be in a fasted state because you just ate an hour and a half ago. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Um, But the absence of food during fasting lowers your insulin. And so there's a guy, his name's Ted Naiman. I want to make sure that we put up on these, on the thing, I guess we need, we'll just put it in under the things I like. This guy, Ted Naiman, he's a doctor. He has a great site that's called Burn Fat, Not Sugar. And I've gotten his I've gotten his permission to use his graph. You'll find the graph in my book. That's why I had to actually call him and get permission to use it. Um, but he says that the sweet spot for people to burn fat is between 18 to 24 hours. And that's the time you'll see the greatest drop in lipolysis. It's called lipolysis. And lipolysis is the breakdown of fat. And that's what we all want, right? We want right. our fat to break down. And they, they say that 18 to 24 hours is the sweet spot. So, um, Terry, I don't know what to tell you, but you got to kind of extend your window. Be brave. She- <laughs> you can do it. And, and if, you're, if your window's not going to be that long, then you, if you, you've got to eat less in your window. If, you're, if you're, your time that you have your fasted state is going to be less than when you are in your eating window needs to be smaller and smaller. So anyway, I've got to run because I got to go pick up my kids before they are, uh, they're (laughs) stuck at the, you know, school without someone to pick them up. But, um, Barry, thanks so much for joining us today and you make it so much fun as always. Same to you. Thanks for having me. All right, have a great one. See you later. See you. And don't forget to put where you're from so we can <laughs> That's right. So we, don't so have to we make can it up. make it up. Barry's going to just make it up next time. That's right. All right. Have a great one. We'll see you guys next time. See you. Bye.